uh, the equilibrium constant, K, which we've talked about uh, for uh, a few lectures now, uh, is the ratio of the concentration of the products over the ratio uh, of the concentration of the reactants raised to their coefficients. And it turns out that that's a really uh, useful piece of information, okay? that ratio, products over reactants. Uh, it turns out it's so useful that we want to use it even if the equilibrium, uh, or excuse me, even if the system's not at equilibrium. Okay? So we still want to calculate that uh, for systems that aren't at equilibrium. Uh, if we do that, though, we can't call it the equilibrium constant, right? Because it's not at equilibrium. Uh, that uh, equilibrium constant uh, for a system that's not at equilibrium, again, we can't call it uh, K, so what we have to do is we call it reaction quotient, and we abbreviate it as Q, okay? So what the reaction quotient is, is basically the equilibrium constant expression for a system that's not at equilibrium. All right, so uh, let's, uh, what do we got over here? So here's our equilibrium system. A is in equilibrium with B. Very uh, generic. When I make up my system, I, I at least say A is in equilibrium with 2B, you know. But nope, just A is in equilibrium with coefficients. So if I write it like this, K equals B over A. What am I saying? That's at equilibrium. Who's at equilibrium? A? The system. A and B are in equilibrium with each other. If I write it like this, Q equals B over A. Guess what? That means it's not at equilibrium. So what was the uh, definition of equilibrium again? One more time. Forward reaction equals reverse. What about the forward action, reaction and reverse reaction? What equals? The rates. The rates of those reactions equal each other. The rate of the forward equals the rate of the reverse. So what does that mean if we're not at equilibrium? Well, that means one of the rates is higher than the other. Okay? That means either the forward reaction rate's faster or the reverse reaction rate's faster. That's all that means. Okay? Eventually, if this is a reversible system, eventually it would come back down to equilibrium. And you can tell which way it is by referencing Q to K. Okay? <coughs> so if, if Q is greater than K, that means this value, the ratio of products over reactants, is larger than this ratio of products over reactants, that means we have too much product. Okay? Or our concentration of products higher than it should be at equilibrium. All right. Okay, so if we have more product bumping into each other, that means the reverse rate is higher. So the reverse rate is going to go until you know the forward rate catches up with it. And then conversely, if we have uh, a scenario where Q is less than K, that means this ratio is a small number than this ratio. The Q ra ratio of the products over reactants in Q is smaller than the ratio of 
products of reactants in K, that means you have too much reactant. Relative to equilibrium. And so if you have too many reactant molecules or more reactant molecules bumping into each other, that means the forward rate is higher than the reverse rate. And eventually that will go back to equilibrium as the reactant molecules get used up, you make some more product molecules. And that's essentially what this uh, graph is uh, telling you. Okay, the higher the concentration of products, your Q becomes larger than K. And the higher the concentration of reactants, your Q becomes smaller than K. And apparently the K equilibrium constant for A in equilibrium is B is 1.45. Made up number. All right. Okay, so uh, that helps you determine where you're at with reference with in relation to equilibrium a lot of the times. It's also used in some uh, non-standard state equations, as we'll see in the future. Okay. But the, uh, the last topic we'll talk about in this equilibrium chapter 